So, I've been a fan of Final Space ever since I first discovered the pilot back in June of last year. And I couldn't tell you how happy I was to hear that TBS had picked it up to be an official series. And I want to say that I've been loving the show ever since I saw the first episode. However, the more I watch, the more I notice something about the story, which got me thinking of a theory. Not one about what Final Space is exactly, but more along the lines of how the story is being told, and what I believe Olin Rogers is doing with the series. Now, before I go on, I must say, I'm not sure if someone has already come up with with the same conclusion as me, or if I had, or or if they had already talked about it in length, I don't really go on the Final Space subreddit or frequent forums. I it's just something I thought that would be fun to talk about. I also have to say uh, that there is a spoiler warning on this video, not only for the show, which is on its fourth episode at the time of writing this, but also for the pilot episode. So if you haven't watched either of those yet, the pilot episode is free on YouTube, on Olin Rogers', Olin Rogers YouTube channel, and the first two episodes are free on TBS, so there's really no reason not to watch it. Now, the series is mainly based off of two things, one being the butterfly effect, which states that if you were to go back in time and change something about your past, then your future would have a drastically different outcome. Uh, two being the time loop paradox, which is a paradox involving time travel, more on that later. And lastly, is something that Hugh says in the pilot episode before Gary's eaten by the temporal worm, which is what really got me thinking about this theory, so I think I'll start there. So, a quick recap of the pilot episode, in case you haven't seen it. Uh, so, we are introduced to Gary, and he's sitting in his destroyed ship, much like how every episode starts, uh, where he's floating in space, running out of oxygen. But uh, the difference is, he's holding on to avocado, and he's having a sort of a semi-serious conversation with himself about what final space is, and how close he was to getting there. And then, not long after, Hugh chimes in and tells him that his death is imminent and that they found what they were looking for, which was a temporal worm, much like the one in episode 3, which Gary and Avogadro go through when they're running from the Lord Commander's ships. Um, in the pilot, Gary makes a decision that he's going through the worm, um, but the main difference between the pilot and the third episode is Gary and Avogadro went through on a ship, while... In the pilot, Gary just jumps through what, what in his like spacesuit, no, no added added protection or anything like that. Um, but like as he's going through, Hugh says something along the lines of, um, he doesn't know how far it's gonna send him back, and it might be too risky, and uh, everything could change. Been detected. Yeah. If this works, you will retain no memory of these events. Only fragments. <clears throat> so, but Gary goes through the worm anyway, desperately trying to remind himself about what's important. He has, he has to remember to save Quinn, then Mooncake, and then the universe. So Hugh saying that uh, Gary's not going to retain any memory, but only fragments of the events that led up to this, uh, is basically what got me thinking of this theory, which basically just boils down to uh, the pilot being a part of the main canon of the story, uh, which could explain a bunch of the slight differences that we see with the pilot and uh, and the main story, like the art style, um, the um, the way <clears throat> the way the characters look and how they're dressed and stuff like that, and the biggest difference being Gary's backstory, uh, and why he's so seemingly obsessed with Quinn, even though in the context of the main story, Quinn is just some random girl he met at a bar. And I know that like TV pilots are usually made just to drum up interest in TV studios, uh, just so that the creators can get like full-on shows, but. Like, the way that the this universe seems to work, I can see it being a uh, big story reveal later on in the future. Which could actually make a lot of sense, because Gary, he's supposed to be the main perspective of the entire series. Uh, we're, we follow him along throughout the... 
the entire season basically and the way that memory works everything is not just like oh i remember everything super specifically uh memory is like oh i can remember bits and details and stuff like that and then it's even more fragmented because he went into the temporal worm went back in time still doesn't really doesn't really remember everything so that could explain why like the infinity guard universe uniforms have patches instead of the hologram thing that um that it has in pilot or how avocado looks completely different or even how the lord commander has like the dragon ball z style scouter on um on his face so, yeah, that's one of the reasons. Which actually brings me to my next point, in which that the story is actually a time loop paradox. Much like how in Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange defeats Dormammu by creating a time loop, in which he dies, comes back, and then dies again until Dormammu gives him what he wants. I think this story will be told multiple times, just in different ways. Like, in the pilot, we see flashes of Gary's past and how he was actually a, uh, he was actually part of the Infinity Guard. Uh, we also see Quinn, and she seems to be a commander, a commanding officer to him, but you also get the sense that Quinn means a lot more to him, um, more than, more than her just being a superior officer. Also, in the way that how every episode starts, with Gary talking to Hugh, floating through space, slowly running out of oxygen, it really gives you a sense that you've seen this before, even though the conversation that they're having is different every time, it's just, it's just a sense of, oh, I've been here, and I, I've seen what's going to happen. Which kind of brings me to my last point, which is the butterfly effect, and where you go back in time and change something about your past, which will ultimately change something about your future. And this could also explain why every time we see Gary in the beginning of the episode, it it feels like he has been in the situation before, and it's not the first time. And for us as a viewer, it also feels like that we've seen him here before, and we know what's going to happen, sort of. Um, like, because when he goes through the temporal worm in the pilot, or in, or rather in the actual series, it was just dumb luck. He and Avocado just went a week forward. Well, what if the temporal worm in the pilot uh, worked and it sent him so far in the past that he has to start over? that he doesn't remember what was happening before, and so the choices that he made ultimately led him down a different path, a path that still kind of ended up with Mooncake and the Lord Commander chasing him, and he's still in the situation, and he still has to find a new temporal worm, try to start over, try to do it again. So that's basically the gist of my theory. Like I said, I don't know if anyone in the community has touched upon this subject or if the creators have already said something about it i don't really pay attention to the subreddits or forums like i said um i also like to say that i really enjoyed making this video um and i'd like to do more of this kind of content so if you if you liked what you saw here today uh please feel free to like subscribe and like leave a comment tell me how i can improve for my next video um yeah I think the next time I make a video about Final Space, I'm going to try to figure out what Final Space is. Perhaps a few more episodes would be released. That would give me more and more of an idea of why it's so important to the story. Thank you again for watching.